And we're live. Welcome to Bill and Eamon's Bogus Hangout. Last week, uh, I met up with Eamon in London. Uh, this week, he's not with us, but we're having a hangout. Uh, so good to have everybody join us. I'm going to have everybody say hello. Doc, why don't you introduce yourself? Good morning, everybody. Doc Sheldon of Intrinsic Value SEO and Search News Central. Tim. I'm Tim Calling. I'm the owner at a Servant's Heart Web Design and Marketing. Is it Terry? Terry Van Horn, SEO Pros and SEO Training Dojo. Mm -hmm. I guess that's it. Pardon me? I was going to introduce myself. <laughs> oh. oh, feel free. Uh, Bill Slowski. Uh, the author of SEO by the Sea and the director of SEO research for Go Fish Digital. Uh, so this is my second hangout of the day. Uh, it's a second intercontinental one. Uh, so the ones that started 6 a.m. are a little bit too early for me. It was still dark outside here. <laughs> Well, that's what you get for being famous, Bill. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, famous in a small sphere, huh? Well, I, I, I said something earlier, and I'll say it again. Your ability to remember dates and names, you know, who was on this patent and what year this happened is intimidating. <laughs> I remember I was in college. I uh, in an English class, and a professor called on me for something, and he said, "Where does this show up in this book?" And I said, "Well, on page one twenty-four, but third the way down." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Where the character says this, 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 and then on page one forty-two, about halfway down." Same character, same, same thing. <laughs> he looked at me. <laughs> he stopped the class for a minute. <laughs> stopped asking you questions after that, eh? He did. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I had been asking myself before that class started that day what questions I would ask. And I said, I would probably ask this one. And I took notes, and the notes just happened to include the page numbers. So it made it really easy to answer them. <laughs> so it wasn't really just brilliance and, and amazing memory. It was preparation. Preparation <laughs> does a lot for you. Yeah, so, right. so Doc asked me how I knew all that stuff, and it's like I'm preparing for a presentation in Italy two weeks. Yeah. Uh, and the stuff I'm preparing for there is the stuff I talked about this morning. So if I prepared, it's because I'm spending all the time writing PowerPoint. And what's, what's the famous saying, chance favors the prepared mind? I knew I was giving the presentation in Italy, and the chance to talk to this webinar came up. I'm pretty much the same subject, so I elected to participate in it. And that's great. It gave me a chance to prepare for both at the same time. There you go. Super. Well, if you can get away with it, why not? <laughs> it's kind of like reusable code, reusable topics, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I wrote a blog post that was relate related to it, too. Yeah. You know, so I'm. Um, uh, recycling over and over again. Very good. And I even did a Search News Central uh, post a couple weeks back that w was related to on context clouds. Hmm. We're all stunned into silence, apparently. 
<laughs> Actually, I was up at 6 a.m. too, but um, that doesn't necessarily mean I was doing anything useful at that hour. I was up at 4.30, but when I finished pee and I went back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happens too, doesn't it? You hit our age and boy, <laughs> yeah. it does happen. You learn to sleepwalk quickly. There you go. Well, we've got a, a little, I don't know if it's this concrete, I guess, uh, sculpture of a dog about this big that we use as a doorstop here on the bedroom door. And last night, apparently, when I closed our bedroom door, I just pulled the dog out of the way, closed the door. And now the dog is about a meter and a half out in the middle of the room. Uh -oh. And I found him at about 4.34 this morning with my right foot. <laughs> Without even looking. And, oh. and woke my, my wife up cussing. <laughs> I think I might have broken a toe on that little oh, bastard. No. <laughs> oh, boy. Hmm. <laughs> That was a pretty good webinar this morning, though. It was, wasn't it? I enjoyed it. It was interesting, yeah. We spent a lot of time preparing for it. I think it paid off. I do, too. It, was, it went very well. Mm -hmm. I learned so a couple for, of things, too, so that's nice. So for those of us in class that didn't make it to the lecture, what was it about? He gave all the secrets to Google, but now we can't give them out. It gave the uh, the actual ideal percentage of keyword density, how to optimize for rank brain. Oh no! <laughs> how to incorporate those LSI keywords? Yes, exactly. Oh, you gotta have those. You gotta have those with the local optimization. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those people I didn't recognize. I mean, a couple of them seem new to me that I don't, I haven't seen around, or one of them at least. I have heard of Andrea. I I knew Cindy, but uh, I had only heard of Andrea. I never actually seen him before. Hmm. Andrea isn't supposed to be one of the hot words. For Android phones, I don't know why. When you said that, it turned my phone on. <laughs> I just dropped that link in there for you, Tim. If you want to go back later and watch that Thank webinar. You. Thank you. I appreciate it. I will do. I will go check that out later. Excellent. Thank you. You talk about your your Android phone being triggered like that. Um, there's a new feature in the latest um, update to the Apple Watch OS that let that lets it just respond when you lift up your your watch and talk to it um, instead of having to say "Hey Siri" first. And that thing is is happening at all kinds of times now when I don't expect it to. I'll be I'll be looking at my watch and then I'll say something to my wife. And after a moment, my watch says, I didn't understand that. Could you say it again? <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering when I can get rid of all the domains I bought for voice search that start with a uh, uh, plumber, uh, marketer. Uh. <laughs> <coughs> Actually, speaking of domain names, one one nice thing that uh, I guess it came out last week was announced. You can start new Google uh, Docs and Sheets and things by putting in the word you want, a uh, type you want, like sheet, and then dot new. That's a quick way to start a new uh, Google um, object document. It's cool. Have you tried it? I mean, it's yes, pretty I have. I've been using it. I use I use Google Sheets a lot. Um, I did just renew my Microsoft Office one more time because it was due, but I don't know how much longer I'll keep doing that. I keep them both. But well, I'm, I mainly use Office these days for word processing, but otherwise, most of the things I do otherwise are sheets. I, I never use Access anymore, which is 
a crack up because that's what I used to develop software for was databases. But, um, I don't know. It's still cheap enough that I just grit my teeth and pay it every year. So. I use uh, 365 for my DNS service. Yeah. That's what I'm using. I like the 365. Yeah, it hooks directly into uh, GoDaddy now, too. I have, I have 365. I think that's what I just renewed, but I don't really use anything else. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Azure hooks right into GoDaddy. Ah. I, I'm on both, so. That's something I use. So. <clears throat> Don't everybody talk at once. I know. I'm sitting here looking at my notes of things that I need to work on, thinking, hmm, can I bring any of these up? Yes, I had something, I had something yet, uh, a while back. I don't know if I mentioned it before with with Google AdWords. That did I, I don't know if I mentioned it in the previous uh, uh, Hangout, but where we had to go in and exclude countries. And I talked to Google on the phone. I was like, how come uh, if I didn't include them that I have to exclude them? <laughs> and, and literally, I had to go in and exclude a lot of countries because we were getting clicks, even though in the campaign we did not add the countries. It's kind of weird. It was weird. And the answer I got wasn't the clearest. It was just a, that's how it is kind of thing. <laughs> It's good to be king. <laughs> yeah, they have all kinds of explanations like that. Try and get them to explain why your AdWords that are targeted for Canada or the U.S., why they're shown in Canada. Right. This was even far worse. It was other side of the world. Pakistan or something, yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, they just need your money. That's that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah, they true. <laughs> well, what it means is that's a suggestion. I would like my ads here, but you put them wherever the hell you want to put. <laughs> Revenue's down a little bit today. Put them in India. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> That'll help get that extra billion for you. Yeah, and you, you want to spend uh, $300 a month as your limit, so we're going to go ahead and spend 60 bucks a day until it's gone. Yeah, And then you yeah. can suck eggs for the other half of the month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but those were good clicks, Doc. I mean, you should have loved those clicks. So. Yeah, if you can only read Mandarin, you'd have loved them. <laughs> <laughs> and on weekends and holidays, they were yeah. well spent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just I, I had a real problem with that. That's something that uh, Steve wrote up a, about a month ago on SNC about the doubling your your daily spend, yeah, as to whatever it prorates out to on a daily basis. That's just over the top. I mean, I could I could understand if they're seeing something there that that you might get some benefit from. Jump it one hundred and twenty five percent, maybe even one hundred and fifty percent, but to double it. And and eat up your your monthly spend, and then well, somebody your bone dry for it. the rest of the month. That's just stupid. Doc, it, somebody's benefiting from it. <laughs> yeah, somebody is. Just not uh, the guy who's all that with on it. campaigns to uh, get more ads, get my stuff shown more. And uh, PPC. So you put up a budget larger than they can uh, can actually accommodate. Yeah. Had a PPC client for a storm window and door company, and we went in on a snowy Monday. That was a holiday, and uh, got a phone call from them halfway through the day. Said, "Please turn it off." <laughs> <laughs> they were getting so many calls from people who wanted storm doors installed. They couldn't handle it all. That's funny. Air I took conditioners in summer. 
I took over a, an account that was a uh, Windows type home home re window replacement for homes, and I looked in their AdWords account, and you know I talked to their marketer, and I was like, "Do you guys do Microsoft Windows? <laughs> <laughs> do you do Ford Explorer Windows? Because you spent thousands on Microsoft and Ford Explorer Windows." Oh, <laughs> The old negative keyword not used. They forgot to, to check the box and said, do what I need. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hard to find that box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still do almost no PPC stuff. I, I have finally started doing little bitty campaigns just to protect uh brand names and things like that because usually they don't generate any expense but just in case somebody's bidding on my brands or my clients so. yeah 90 percent of mine is seo uh just normal seo probably well i'd say about 80 percent and 10 percent social 10 percent paid it's kind of what where my clients fall in i'd say my my seo is closer to well between SEO and websites is probably closer to 99%. <laughs> Very little PPC. If I if I had a client that needed serious PPC work, I would refer them to somebody like Steve. Or I have one yeah. client that already had their own when they came to us. So um, that's what I do. Fun. I have I have Steve do all the PPC for us. I just yeah, no I desire can, to learn it, and I, woefully ignorant on how to do it right. So I can bring I can it protect my brands. That's it. That's all I want to fool with. Uh, it's probably worth doing it if I really wanted to spend the time on it. Or, I don't know. I'm probably just being lazy. But after all, this is a job where you can sit on your tail all day long. So what's not? What's wrong with lazy, right? What's not to like, eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Well, Bill, besides uh, your thing this morning, you want to share anything else about your trip to England or any other things that you talked about or heard about there that would be good for us to to learn about or hear about besides bangers and mash? So the most difficult time I had in visiting England was I was supposed to speak at a, a building that was Google's headquarters in St. Giles, London. They hadn't bothered putting posting any outdoor signs. I saw your post about that. I was like, I, walk, I walked around for forty-five minutes trying to find the building until I started asking people at other buildings. Wow. I wonder if there's actually a reason for that. I mean, there must be, but I wonder what it is. They shared the building with other companies, so if they so they were, were precluded from having an outdoor sign because all the companies would have been posted outdoors for those buildings too, or for that building. Hmm. Well, here in Southern California, they could put their name on the building. They just have to uh, be the highest bidder for the rights to. There you go. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. All the big buildings you see going up the freeways that have company names. It's not the only company there, usually. They just have the biggest uh, budget for signage. No, that makes sense. Anything technical of interest, though? I'm not sure I can say that. Uh... Eat a nice uh, seafood place. <laughs> Eat a nice steakhouse. The uh, uh, SEOs I visited uh, thought that a steakhouse would be the kind of place I would want to go to. So it was a type of place where you ordered the uh, cut of beef by the pound or by the ounce. And they were pretty proud of how large the stakes were. Pretty proud reflected in the price? 
<laughs> and how they could, uh, how much they could brag about how large the T bones were and things like that, uh -oh. and sirloins. And it's like, because I grew up in the Midwest United States, surrounded by cattle fields. Um, that, this really isn't much new. <laughs> what state did you grow up in, Bill? Ohio. Oh. Yeah. I'm from Nebraska. So. A lot of beef there. And corn, popcorn, and soybeans. Well, I grew up in Texas, and any state that wasn't 16 ounces was considered an aperitif. That's a lady's <laughs> <state>, right? <laughs> You didn't get into the king size until you got up around thirty-two ounce, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. We had we had extra refrigerators and freezers, and we visited a butcher a couple times a uh, year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we had a big old got it a twenty-something cubic foot chest freezer out in the garage, and would you know, a side of beef would just about fill that thing up, and we generally had that thing at least half full. Nice. So we'd uh, cut our own steaks to put on the grill in the backyard. Mm -hmm. That's one of the one of the kitchen gadgets I missed. We used to have a regular, you know, restaurant style electric slicer that uh, you could, you know, if you wanted an inch and a quarter, or inch and a half steak, whatever, you just adjust the thing out and go right through a roast. Cut yourself a real nice steak. I really miss having that machine. Hmm. I remember my dad used to cuss when, when I would usually do. He'd do the 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 rough butchering, you know, and then and then I'd end up doing the cuts and wrapping, get all the the dirty work, you know. And then he would cuss when he'd take a hard frozen slab of ribs out that I had cut too big and it wouldn't fit in anything <laughs> that we had. <laughs> and he'd have to get out the bone saw and try to cut this thing down and <laughs> cuss the whole time. I guess my eyes, he always said my eyes were bigger than my stomach. You know, I, my appetite was ruling the size of the cuts I was making. <laughs> There's an old joke about the the new uh, newlywed wife who goes to make a roast for her husband and she cuts the end of it off uh, into the roast before she puts it in the pan. And she, a couple more times she does this and finally says, why do you do that? She says, well, my mom always cut the end off. So they figured it must be some cooking trick. They go and ask the, the wife's mother. She said, no, my, my pan wasn't big enough to hold the whole roast. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's an old joke. <laughs> Yep. So your next trip, Bill, you're going to be where? I'm going to uh, Milan, Italy. That's nice. right. Nice. It's about an hour or so from where my great-grandmother came from in Italy. Really? So I'm going to go visit where she's from and see what that's like. That's great. Yeah. What are you speaking on? I guess the same thing you did in England, you said? I'm um, speaking on uh, knowledge graphs. Oh, knowledge graphs. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. It, I'm supposedly talking about practical SEO and and talk about how, how knowledge graphs work and how they get updated. which I think will be something new to a lot of people I'm presenting to. I think the, the way that they're doing their knowledge graph definitely does give us some ideas of where their thoughts are going, you know, beyond the knowledge graph. Yeah. That's the first step to figuring out, you know, the, you put that, Wayne Gretzky SEO to work. Figure out where the ball is going to be. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Then they change everything on you. 
Ah, well. <laughs> keep keep life interesting, us. right? Keeps us fully employed. You'll want to get bored. Change it all day long. That's fine. It's got to be just difficult enough for other people can't do it, but we can. <laughs> It's time for some changes. There's too much garbage. Yeah. There really is. Yeah. I mean, too many, too much keyword stuffing and keyword density and uh, force people to do things like put schema markup on pages, make them think. Or is that too much work? Some of the junk that I see day to day is in the local arena, of course, with my type of clients. And some of that's just because of the way that Google does things. Proximity is king, even if the, the most proximate provider is a schlock compared to somebody that's five blocks away that's much better. It, in some ways, they bring these things upon themselves. In the local pack, I'm talking about. Yeah. If you're a super good plumber, and I forget about you know local service ads for a minute, and you you can't rank us uh, in the three pack, um, and somebody five blocks away can, even though they're not as good. That's kind of broken as far as their yeah. being benefit to the consumer and all that, and yet. So what do you do? You know, so people go out and they create phony addresses and things responding to that sort of artificial constraint. So I'm just saying Google brings some of it on themselves. Well, it, to me, it would make sense if <clears throat> proximity, neither proximity nor uh, service area had an advantage over the other. I mean, if that plumber serves my as my portion of Cincinnati and there's a guy two blocks away from my neighborhood in Cincinnati. One of them's in a service area and the other one is, is actually local. To me, they should receive equal consideration in the SERP. But it doesn't work that way. I understand it doesn't. It just it doesn't make sense to me. I agree. Particularly when, as a consumer, I may be more interested in this more established guy who has to drive 50 miles to get to me, but I'm, he may be more reliable or or experienced or whatever than this guy who happened to rent a, a garage two blocks away. Exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> or in my industry, the, the, the entity that has nurses that live nearby, even though the headquarters is 20 miles away or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. They should just ask us how to do it. Well, you know, early, in the early days, there were an awful lot of search operators available to us, you know, to, to users as to what sort of you know, some of the search engines would let you determine what was your most important factor. Was it proximity? Was it uh, uh, size or what, what? I don't remember some of the, the criteria, but there were some selectors available to us to set, set up our search profiles on some of the search engines. With non Google engines, yeah, no, non Google, yeah. I think, I think InfoSeek did a little bit of that. I don't remember now. I don't remember which ones did which. Until Google came into pro prominence, I used Alta Vista a lot. Yeah, um, and I forget what else. Yahoo, I guess, early on. <laughs> I still remember one company I worked with. Um, agonizing over whether to try to do a deal with Yahoo. I'm not sure that now that it would matter much for either company, but it was just pretty funny in retrospect. <laughs> would we be better off with some strong competitors to Google? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we would. Um, yeah. Um, uh, it, now, so on the other hand, it's it's nice and convenient to only need to go to one place for most of the searches, or or maybe what I, what that means is only have one place to go. 
yeah. at least that, that most people know about. There's a convenience va value there, but it doesn't always mean that you get the results in some cases that, that are the, the optimum ones for the consumer. Yeah, I don't think that'll ever happen or it'll be a long time. Be a total change in search because the companies that are out there now, they own all the patents. It's pretty hard to, to do something and not be infringing on patents. Yeah, Bing is about the only entity out there that ha would have the ability to to compete, and they've pretty much proven themselves unable. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, they could divorce themselves from I Microsoft. I think unable they might is the wrong word, Doc. Say again. I think unable is the wrong word. Unwilling, perhaps. Uh, unwilling would be more likely. That's probably yeah. who's going to sink millions into something that. It's been proven to change the uh, habits of most searchers as very tough. You got to yeah. give them a compelling reason. And, you know, I haven't seen results that are even close. They either copy Google or so much like Google, you might as well just go to Google. Yeah, I saw an interesting article by some economist who I had never heard of before a couple weeks ago talking about what if you know he just basically wrote up a scenario what might happen if the government forced google to break up break up what into what break to break up the, basically their their stranglehold on search but they, they haven't done anything to get the up stranglehold it's not like microsoft where they basically said Put our product on this much of your shelf. Yeah, well, and under off this little bit, or under we're not U.S. law, that is not required. Under U.S. law, if the government determines that you essentially have a monopoly, they can force a breakup. So, so in this Google, case, what we, Google what? has multiple search engines. They have news search. They have local search. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. see so many people complaining that Google is serving their own search results, yeah. their own yeah. properties to be. That's bullshit. Yeah. It's like it's bullshit. It's all search. Right. Yep. Those are just parts of search that are more uh, focused. Focus search is all it really is. Yeah. Right. You I, came to Google for a search. You get Google search results. What did you expect? I'm sorry, I can't see the U.S. government coming in and saying you're a uh, monopoly because everybody likes you more. They uh, didn't I can't have... see that happening. I can't see that. I can't see that passing the mustard in court. Yeah. They didn't have any problem doing it to the bail company. Yeah, and uh, how long did it last for? I don't can't tell you offhand, but not that long. Yeah, <laughs> because they've seen it doesn't all. It also doesn't work. Well, it creates really other good. problems. Yeah, it just yeah. a bunch of stuff. Bigger after. problems. It creates bigger problems. Yeah, let's let's put government in charge of regulating. Yeah, yeah. let's put government. <laughs> in they charge. they do so well at everything yeah. else. Yeah, that's that right. always works out so well when you put yeah. government in charge. Nothing could possibly know so much about technology. Wait. Yeah, oh, you know what? Wait a minute. No, no, no. You could take Matt Cutts, who's in now in government service, and have him be in charge of Google. There you go. <laughs> yeah, after watching uh, Zuckerberg's session in, in, in the committee, I'd, I would be really hesitant to trust their ability to regulate technology. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't Zuckerberg. It was uh, pitiful. It was the legislators. No, oh, no, I understand. I mean, they, yeah. There was so much ignorance in that room, it was scary. Yeah. And they're trying to make laws about it. That's what's even scarier. Yep. Well, think about it. Those guys probably don't even have to carry wallets, phones, anything. I mean, basically, everybody no, around them no, gives no. them whatever they need at the moment. So exactly. yeah. They've got somebody to carry that for them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think, I, I mean, from a, like an emotional standpoint, do I like the fact that, that Google has 
what I would casually call a monopoly over all this? No, I don't. But I don't see any practical way that anyone could do anything about it. I don't call them a, a, a monopoly because that means someone handed it to you or it usually does in Canada anyhow. Uh, but uh, they have a very large market share. They have a stranglehold on the market. That's what I mean. So. Yeah. Well, there's a difference between monopoly, which basically says the government handed you your business on a silver platter, or there's those who actually earned it. And I say Google earned it, and more power to them. I laugh when people complain. Like, where would we be if we just had, if Google never came along? Search wouldn't be where it is right now. Oh, for sure. I, I don't know enough about the history to be confident of this, but I think that, for instance, Standard Oil at the beginning of, what, the 20th century um, didn't get its monopoly or its control of the market from the government, and yet everybody refers to it as a monopoly, at least here in the States, or what it, it was a yeah, monopoly. Okay, then, but then, yeah. you know, I can yeah. call anything a monopoly. Does that make it true? It's semantics, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. You it's semantics. In, in the States, under law, a monopoly doesn't have to have been handed to you. I mean, you could start oh, out okay. penniless, but it also doesn't necessarily mean you have a total monopoly. You basically have enough control over the market that you can effectively choke out competitors. And Google definitely has that under that definition. But I agree, you know, where the hell would we be if Google hadn't come along? You know, it, it's amazing how much information is available to us, at, you know, on our phone all over the world, basically, because of Google. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And and I don't I don't ascribe to the conspiracy theories that Google is on a quest for world domination. OK, I do have concern anytime I see any single entity with that much control over so much it's it, because the potential for abuse you know larry and Sergey die tomorrow who's going to be the next person making the charge that could all change so the potential exists but i don't you know i don't think that they're evil uh like you you know good for them these two kids out of college built something that is just phenomenally successful and continuing to grow that's that's pretty damn good that's impressive do the Google founders still have controlling interest of all the shares? Like, yeah. are they still in charge? Yeah, they have. They have a significant amount. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they have controlling, but they. Yeah, control is a big difference. Uh, they have controlling that. amounts. Yeah. They control they enough to nobody can. They control enough to say we're not going to run search tomorrow. Okay, that's what that's what I was getting at. So they do, oh, right, because they made certain stocks worth 10 times as much. Right. So they, and they own them. So Great I, stock, it there. <laughs> stock, right. So they Very got a Canadian uh, thing. That's what they do in Canada. So that they can't get, the, get bought out by companies. They just increase the number of shares and give them to themselves. That's and, how and the class. Like, yeah. I don't think they gave Eric Schmidt enough property to uh take away their control hmm. without eric oh okay so it's with schmidt the three of them have no i i think that uh the two of them oh, okay cool things without schmidt's stocks involved hmm that's interesting now, when you start playing with, with stock splits and, and new classifications or whatnot, they can get pretty creative. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, that's how they stop takeovers here. Oh, someone wants to buy some, well, we're going to increase the number of shares and they can't buy them. But I don't miss running uh, ranking reports for 15 different search engines. Ah, true. Yeah, I definitely don't miss that. Could you imagine how much money those guys would make? If you did have to check 15 search engines, your keywords would be multiplied by 15. <laughs> so if your contract said you could have 500, you would have to buy, uh, you know, 
let's say uh, SCM Rush would be a very lucrative. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not that it isn't now. I had to increase mine. And Christ, there isn't a, much of a jump between pro and guru, but oh, there no. sure isn't fucking price. <laughs> I've, I've had my Semrush account for many, many years, and I keep thinking, you know, do I still really need it? I, I guess I do. But the main reason I don't drop it sometimes when I don't use it for a while is because I can't afford to buy back in. It's yeah. just, it would be crazy because I'm still at Legacy. Don't want to let go of that grandfathered price, man. Same thing with Majestic. I got to say, I've been using Ahrefs much more, much more than uh, Majestic for a long time, but I had to give up my Majestic pricing. Because it again, it's pretty cheap compared to what they charge now. I've got I've got a Hootsuite account from I think '07, <laughs> but and it uh, I, twenty five cents a month. But it's so it's like fifteen bucks compared to what you'd have to pay five hundred for. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to get rid of it just in case. <laughs> yep. Pretty crazy. I will say, if you're trying to be on a budget. Um, there's this one tool, actually, I think I, I shared in the dojo about it, um, called SERP works. Have, have any of the rest of you tried that? It's a browser add in oh. SERP W O R X. They, they use, um, API probably to pull in information from SEMrush and from Moz and from, uh, everything except Ahrefs. Actually, if you, if you have an Ahrefs API, uh, you can, you can plug that in, but it's yeah, it's kind of a useful little thing. I, I'm enjoying it, and it's nine bucks a month, so or ten bucks a month. Does it give you keyword density? No, just uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what all is there to be honest. <laughs> For ten bucks a month, I almost kind of like go. Oh, okay, fine. I mean, I may need it more someday, so I'm not sure what is in there to be honest. But. That's actually, oh. I think, starting. Those costs are getting to the point where people starting off in business, they're not even getting started with proper tools. That's a good point. I think those companies should really rethink what they're doing here. Uh, Cause they're, they're, they're barring new people from coming into the market and learning their tools. Barrier to entry? Pardon me? They're creating a barrier to entry? Yes. Definitely, because even I, I well, since I've cut down the number of clients I have, uh, I can't justify paying the amount of money that I'm paying for these uh, apps. It's just, you know, insane. Unless you have five to ten customers, it doesn't make sense. Have you seen uh, the one, the new one called Local Falcon? No, that's pretty cool. Let me do a. I'm gonna throw a caution to the winds here and do a screen share. I haven't done this for a long time. Let's see. Um, okay, I know this is gonna go wonky on me here for a minute. Let's see. Uh, do you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is a product um, from a guy named Jan Gilbert, um, pretty smart guy in local. Um, and and let see. I'm not logged in right now. Okay. Uh, maybe I have to accept cookies first. OK. Um, well, maybe I better log in. Somebody look. Okay, so we go showing out bandwidth with the video, probably. Okay, so let's see. Let me put in. Um, <clears throat> 
in the home health care and home care market. And I'll put in um, home health care and say search. And there's a phrase, but see what it's doing is it's showing you how they rank for that search term relative to other people that have You can then answer the, the, the question from the client when he says, oh, how come we're not ranking over you know, here when I'm looking for my home compared to when I'm at the office. And what's cool about this is you can go clear out to a 13 points. I'm not going to show you that because it takes a long time to, to run then. But it's very, very, very useful for, um, you know, the right kind of... Uh, You guys see me okay now? Or I mean, can you see my screen? You probably can't now. Can't now. See you. Okay. So any he keeps freezing. Oh, my screen's frozen. Yeah, I'm gonna turn my camera off. That might make it better. Does that make sense? That useful? Yeah, I think with your camera off, all we see is your logo. <laughs> so what kind of area of coverage does that provide a glimpse of? So up to the 13, 13 by 13. So I do the math. What's, um, what's a What's the diagonal? Uh, what's the hypotenuse of the triangle on a 13 by 13? 13 miles? <laughs> what? No, no, I'm, I'm asking. You, you said 13, but. What's the value of it? The sound is choppy, and yeah. we keep on losing your voice. <laughs> now we lost him entirely. <laughs> okay, so can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's probably yeah. gods or something. So the point is, you can you can search a grid where you've got um, every in the maximum grid size right now is every. Five kilometers, uh, or how that particular company ranks. So, um, you know, I can take a client and see how they rank up to um, well, it's probably like 10 or probably more like um, 60 miles away or something like that. So how large do those grids cover? It's 13 meters from one grid point to the next. Can you hear me? You little chop. Can. Yeah, it's been choppy since you did that screen share. So Have you been able to figure out what that does exactly? To me, if I want to know the competitors within a certain distance of me, it doesn't matter unless they're ranking, does it? Is it just telling you whether or not they appear in search results or? Sorry about my bandwidth issues. It's showing you how you. You 
roll point. I'm really sorry. I don't know what's going on. Can you hear me at least? <laughs> Google yes. seems to uh, say, oh, he's in charge here now. Let's start scrolling with him. <laughs> hey, great. So your map was showing me a large piece of Oceanside. Um, so, well. So does this software I, cover a grid large enough to encompass most of Oceanside? Actually, um, probably um, when I showed you the actual grid that it was building out, yeah. I think should have been showing you um, some place or Italy. But then again, that could be because apparently my my system is somewhat bandwidth challenged right now. Um, but the idea is that you can, yeah, you should try it out. Um, it's local address of the Google My Business listing that you're using as the starting point. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard that or not. Can you still hear me? You're still a little choppy. Okay. Well, anyway. Brought that up. <laughs> I don't know why my system's so uh, very clamped today. I think I'm going to drop back off. I have a feeling that my, for some reason, I'm really blocking things here. I'll, I'll drop off and let you guys continue. Okay. So that was an interesting tool. I haven't tried it out, but I think I'm gonna look at it just G whizzes. Local Falcon, huh? I don't have any clients that are like that local. I don't. <laughs> I didn't see you using that, but that's a really tight grid. That's a tight grid for. Yeah. I mean that's. Unless I read it wrong, it looks like it was one kilometer, which is pretty tight in my mind. Are, they, are each one of the balloons a competitor? Uh, With how many local listings they have? I'm not sure, Terry. I'm reminded of when I lived in Delaware and, and worked in a Maryland office. And I would sometimes do searches in Delaware and see some results and go to work and do the same searches and see completely different results. And they were like half, half an hour drive apart. So I didn't expect to see the differences in results that I was, but Do you see that many differences in a local search when you're in that small grid? You know, you know, I see them in a few mile range. So I've seen them where uh, I have clients all over the nation, but I actually have one three miles away as well. And in his office, total difference. I can do a screenshot of the, the map results, totally different from Three miles away, four miles away, and it's it's an interesting topic because 
and in some cases he doesn't show for his keywords because of the three mile difference in some cases he does but the stats the stats show in google my business there's plenty of stats to support that he's definitely getting seen if that if that makes sense but it is it definitely differs but could not be from uh, from it being from a different computer not the uh, just the distance because of the data that Google collects on probably your browser probably your right your browser location you know but they're, they're saving web history too that's true which affects search yeah. right there's there's a number of personalized things like if you uh, if I do a search and I'm logged in I get really different results when I log out. Oh yeah, that's. And there could be some of that. For instance, I think Google tracks some computes, some users by something other than an app, than their ID. I'm convinced they're tracking me by my modem uh, ID. In other words, there's there's my, I don't know the exact name of it, but there is an address that's different in your modem where they can uh, pick your modem up based on its domain name or my brother had another name for it. My brother knows more about these things. I just push all that kind of stuff at him and say, figure it out. But that's what, cause we were both using the same computer and we're getting different results and started noticing that it, you know, oh. it could be more than just the, the small distance. Yeah. And also when uh, we can search at the exact same time and my client is downtown and I'm maybe, oh, maybe 15 miles from them and get different results. Mine are gonna be closer to me. But Toronto's a very large city, so it takes me 45 minutes to get downtown from where I am to where he is. But see big difference in the results. Of course, they might be logged in too. <laughs> That looks like, uh, I just looked at that program. It looks like it grabs all the different addresses and shows what, uh, how many local search uh, packs are in. That seems to be what it's doing. I'm sharing a stat from, sharing a stat from one of these I was talking about. I don't know if you can see the screen. Yeah. Give you an idea this is small a small town but it's uh, touristy so this is during the peak of season when there's travelers it gives you an idea of what uh, so I'm wondering if that local Falcon thing what I'm gonna I'm gonna do some tests with this client just to see what it shows kind of stuff. I like SEM Rush. I put uh, five competitors in my uh, checking and see all the uh, who's got what in the uh, featured snippets and whatnot. And I was thinking when we were discussing what put good, what could put Google under, I think it'll kill itself when it dies. It'll have committed suicide by putting too much crap in the cert, i.e. all those answers and all the other stuff. Yeah. 
or fragmented searches. I mean, how many times do you go to Amazon instead of the Google or, uh, or any of the sub search engines, the niche type things? Well, I think you kind of already have to look at uh, Amazon as a destination like Google. Uh, right. It's a destination for shoppers, basically. So I know lots of people that when they're going to shop, they don't even go to Google. They just go immediately to Amazon. Right, exactly. And the prime, the prime thingy is all about that, getting people so that they don't even bother searching, they just go to I Amazon. Think, I think a lot of people are getting to the realization that Amazon is no longer the uh, best discount. Uh, when it comes to the cost of products, you can get things cheaper at other places. Uh, we're seeing places like Walmart uh, pulling out the stops, competing with them uh, in terms of delivery and, and pricing. And nobody can compete with Walmart on price. <laughs> That's a given. <laughs> Not even Amazon can. Because when you think about it, a lot of Amazon's business isn't even owned by Amazon. It's owned by people who have stores on Amazon. Amazon will beat Walmart in terms of delivery times, sometimes. Right, but unless I want it today, right now, do I really care whether I get my pants on Friday or next Monday? Uh, and, I don't think many people are. And Walmart's doing the in-store delivery thing, too. Yeah. Uh, in Toronto now, I can yeah. phone a grocery store, and they'll even deliver them to my house. Yeah. That put Web Gateway, uh, Grocery Gateway, that's what's kind of putting all those companies in. in. If they aren't closed, they will be, because companies are realizing people want to search on the web do their pricing and all, you know, the day of going and a day of shopping is gone. People now want to go to their computers, figure out what they want to buy, and then they go out and buy it. I know Walmart opened an office near me here in San Diego, and so has uh, Amazon, where they're both uh, investigating uh, grocery store deliveries. Uh, to see who can provide that as a surface service cheaper, better. Well, who just bought better. Whole Foods? Wasn't that Amazon? That was Amazon. Yeah, that's why they're going to do a grocery service at some point. You can be guaranteed of it. And, uh, and one, yeah. and I think a model that has been very slow to be picked up is where you order online and then go to the store and pick it up. Yeah. I think it's something that that's going to become huge. I see that a lot, even especially here because people check in. The, the vacationers come and check in on Saturdays. So what they're doing is they're ordering ahead of time and picking up at the local Walmart here on Saturday when they come in for vacation. So the food is ready. Well, also, one of the problems in the past has been you see it online, right? Yeah. And you say, I want to buy that, so I'm going to go to the store now. And you get to the store, and it was sold out. So I think that's why uh, that model will become uh, pretty popular. If you have a store, uh, you'll allow people to buy it online and pick it up at the store, save themselves, especially anything with heavy delivery charges. Because that can influence the buying decision. The cost of delivery. Well, it doesn't like, look like Tim has been out of it. No. So I've been, I've been, uh, I've purchased online from Walmart and gone to the store to pick up before. That works well. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of Walmarts around where I live, and 
I saw something from them that said something about uh, they don't mind that type of providing that type of service since they have so many uh, stores in clusters of large populations. Right. It's a good business model for them. And and what how how did that work when you went to the store? Did you just go to the cashier and or there's a an office just inside the store. Uh, oh, so almost like cashier. customer care. Yeah, there's a customer care area with, oh, okay. where you can pay. There's a register and a line. Yeah, we, we don't even have to get out of the car. We just check in with our app and they bring the groceries to the car. Wow. So this was this was for everything in the Walmart. It wasn't just groceries. Ah. That's cool. Do you pay more for that? Like someone told me, take a look at the prices. They're a lot more expensive when you buy like that. No, the prices weren't any more expensive. So it was the same prices they were selling it for in the store. Uh, I didn't pay for it. I just picked it up. I'm pretty sure it is though. Oh, okay. That's not bad then. And there's no tipping. Really? Yeah. I always give my tip. Don't take wooden nickels. <laughs> and stay in school. <laughs> yeah, stay in school. That's another good one. <laughs> well, I've got to run, gentlemen. It's been fun. It has been. We're past the hour, so I think it's time to call tonight. Thank you, everybody. Take See care. you later.